What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode This is episode number 43 and today we are returning with three more big games with Aston Villa Plus hopefully one or two more signings as well Because if you missed the last episode you would have missed our first two signings of January And what steals they were absolutely fantastic new signings both coming on the pre-contracts next season uh, The first one I'm so excited about this guy Alexei Mirinchuk joining from Stuttgart next year on a pre on a, uh, on a free transfer at uh, 49 and a half grand a week is all we're paying for the cam who's got some really nice stats plus the flare tray as well what a steal that is and if that wasn't a good enough steal right at the end of the episode we signed Serge Gnabry from Bayern Munich all sort of free transfer as he'll come in to start a season four four star skill moves high medium work rates also has the same traits as Alexei as well on 105 grand a week so uh, yeah two really good signings there very happy with both and today's games are going to be against Southampton at home in the FA Cup third round uh, we then got Bournemouth away at the Vitality Stadium as well and our first Third and final game today is at home against Watford too. And there might be one or two more signings as well. So lots to get through today. Let's get straight to it. We also should see the conclusion of the Ashley Young saga probably before the first game today. Just going to wait and see if there is an email or not. Well, there's two right there. And we're going to find out if Young is going to leave the club, I'm sure. No. Uh, but there is a loan offer for Zagadou. Everton want to take him on a one-year deal. Forget it. He doesn't play much this season. Uh, but we really like him. We really like Zagadou. Very good uh, score player to have. And he's going nowhere. And there was a bid as well for Christian Benteke. Oh, Christian Benteke. Wanted by Borussia Mönchengladbach for 20.5 mil. Now, this is actually a really interesting offer because Benteke... Teke this season has been in pretty decent form, started off quite slow, but then picked it up. But at 29 years old, 81 rated, probably not going to get much better, but we really do like him. So do we want to sell, cash in? Because we could definitely make a profit on the guy. That would be a profit on the guy after we signed him from Palace 15.5 mil. The chief exec is suggesting we could get around 26 to 38.2 mil for him, and that will bump our budget up big time. To around, what, 30 million pounds, perhaps? How much have we got right now? About 4 million? Uh, 3 million. And 20, 20, what did I say? 26 million. That's about 29 million. Basically, we get a lot of money. And and, and Benteke, I'm probably not going to get any better at 29 years old. But I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm going to play Southampton game and think about that. I'm not against negotiating the sale of Benteke, but I'm not too sure. We really like him. But it is worth noting, no player has scored more goals in this Aston Villa team this season than Christian Benteke. However, that bid does tempt me a lot. So I'll be thinking about it a lot during this game. Benteke's got to give me a reason not to part ways with him. But for the game today, it's the third round of the FA Cup as we play host to Southampton. Uh, we're lining up in a 3-5-2. Uh, a few changes after our win in the last game, but for the most part, it's a really strong lineup out there as Jack Grealish does wear the captain's armband after a really good first half of the season. Up top together is Benteke and Brewster as we try and get through to the fourth round with minimal fuss. Well, a couple of star names that we're looking at today. What do you think, Alan? Well, I think both of these players should come into this match with their confidence brimming, really, because uh, they really have played well. They've uh, led from the front. Goals this season have really been shared by all of our players. No one man has stood out more than anyone else. But Benteke, again, is, a, is a currently our top scorer. And here he's on the ball for our first chance, finding a little bit of room to shoot. And, oh, Christian Benteke flies it in. And what did we say pre-game? He's got to give us a reason to make sure we don't negotiate with Jim Glad back one bit and keep him here. He wants to stay at Aston Villa. I know he does. We brought him back and he's in the form of his life. Quick little body fade to get him a little bit of room. Stops on a dime, finds some space and bends it past Moret and into the top corner. The Belgian with another. It's not great goalkeeping to be honest but it's a really nice finish as the Belgian fires in front. Perfect start. We can't sell him. We can't can't sell him. That was pretty poor footwork from Moret. Got across his line very slowly. And you might have noticed late, there's been some really poor goalkeeping, uh, particularly in the My Player say, both for Watford and, uh, and our opponents Liverpool in the last game as well with Carriers. And I've seen it in the career mode say as well over the past now few episodes. There's been a little bit of suspect of goalkeeping. Pitch. I don't know if this patch has changed that or anything. As Brewster is through and should have made it too. But yeah, the goalkeepers at the moment not really doing very well. But anyway, it's 1 0 to Aston Villa. That's all we care about. That should have been two though. Golden chance for Real who did score against Southampton against him in the league at St Mary's to break us out of our funk but still 1-0 as we go in search of a second to get an early two goal cushion 
I must say, I don't really keep up to date with FIFA patches. So if there has been one and goalkeeper was something they addressed, then maybe that explains it. But I, uh, I don't know. It's Bustos finds Brewster into Grealish, captain of the night. And oh, Alex Merritt says, well, no, 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 no. Goalkeepers haven't been toned down. I'm glowing up. It's a wonderful save to deny Jack. Brilliant reactionary stop there as he turns over the bar and behind for a corner. Still Aston Villa 1 down to nil, but all the early pressure coming from the Villa as we look for a second goal. And Dean Lewis wins it off so Nathan Redmond. Oh, yes, I really like this youngster as McCarthy plays it through to Dale Fry. Uh, with five minutes to go in the first half, still might be a chance to get ourselves a two-goal cushion. We deserve it. We've played very well. And here is the opportunity. Bustos storming clear. He's got Benteke at the far post to aim for. You know he's going to win the header, and you know he's going to score. It's what he does. Christian Benteke is so good at winning the balls in the air as he makes it Aston Villa 2, Southampton 0 for Bustos as well. His crosses are so good. He doesn't score too many goals. He did score a wonderful goal a couple of episodes ago. That's a brilliant cross. Picks out Benteke, who heads it past merit for his second of the game. Two in Aston Villa, Benteke with both. Young with a tackle in perhaps well. one of his final appearances Adams. for the club. If he decides to sign a pre-contract with Leeds or Ipswich, and it's Grealish on the ball, releasing Benteke, and here he is on for the hat-trick. Can he finish it? Can he finish it? Christian Benteke, he can finish it. And that is why we are going to say to Borussia Mönchengladbach, thanks, but no thanks. You keep the cash, we'll keep Christian. I said pre-game, he needs to do something today to show us why he needs to stay at Aston Villa. He runs to the bench to celebrate with Dean Maria, who got a hat-trick in the last game, and it's back-to-back hat-tricks for an Aston Villa player. Lovely through by Grealish, Benteke storms clear, holds off Seamus Coleman and puts it past Merritt and into the back of the net for the match ball. Aston Villa 3, Southampton 0, Benteke stays. And that is going to do it. Final score with the final whistle here at Villa Park. Aston Villa 3, Southampton 0 and Christian Benteke gets the match ball and says to the fans, don't worry lads, I'm not off to Germany, I'm staying right here. Our top scorer this season deserves the match ball and the champagne. What a performance and we're through to the FA Cup fourth round. This wasn't a dominant win or anything like that. It was just all about being clinical. Southampton had shots, but they only had one on target and didn't really test McCarthy at all in the entire match. Whereas for us, every time we went forward and had shots, we looked like scoring with them and Benteke scored three of our six. So no surprises for man of the match, the champagne, the match ball, and my personal congratulations, Christian Benteke, staying here at Villa Park, going absolutely nowhere. We love him too much. Oh, Christian Benteke can't sell the man of the moment. The honest truth is we're not a selling club anymore. Aston Villa had sold some of their key players in the past. Benteke to Liverpool, that was a release clause, I think. Milner uh, going to Manchester City, uh, Delft going to Manchester City, uh, Young, who is going to be leaving, as we see, to join Ipswich Town on a pre-contract as he'll link up to McCarthy uh, to Manchester United. But now we're not a selling club. We don't need to sell our star players. We've got the cash, sort of, and we've got really good players here that play so well together. So uh, there's interest in Mbemba, there's interest in Lucas Hernandez. Liverpool want to try and sign on a what a deal that'll be for them uh, as uh, Swansea want to sign Fabian Delph but like I just said there we're not a selling club anymore we're keeping our star players here and not letting these guys go so Delph is staying and Christian Benteke will be staying as well Young's going to it switch town but that's going to happen anyway he's going to leave on free, uh, free transfer come the end of the season anyway but Benteke is staying yeah we can negotiate yeah we could get quite a bit of money for him based on the form he's in right now we could get upwards of 30 to 40 million pounds and uh, we went to Liverpool I think it was around 32 million pounds something like that but we're saying no, Christian Benteke is in red hot form right now. He's going nowhere. We're not a selling club. Simple as that. Obviously, I've got a lot of Aston Villa fans that follow me, and I've always said this. I love Villa Park. I've been there before, but not to watch a game, sadly. I wanted to go there this year, but couldn't get tickets to the Millwall away game. But when Randy Lerner was the owner of the club, you just never really felt like whatever good player they had was going to be there for the long term. You always felt that Randy Lerner was going to put pressure on the managers to sell and cash in, but not anymore. We're keeping our star players no matter what. And Stones, one of our key players this season, says, Hello, boss. Thought I'd put my head around the door, say thanks for having faith me, uh, faith to play me so much. Not a problem, John. Our club record signed in this season and what a season he's having as well played really well for us this year and a clean sheet in that last game too I think for me like obviously I'm 25 years old now so I've watched an awful lot of football over the years when I see a, a big club that's fallen not you know to a point where they can never get back from it but you think of some of the, the big clubs that I used to watch play in the Premier League 
um, when I was growing up as a kid as Cristiano Ronaldo wins the player of the year. Aston Villa's fall has been quite sad for me because I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for them. So it's a little bit of a shame. But uh, I really hope they can get back to the big time sooner rather than later. Uh, and Bemba has been approached by Real Sociedad. There's interest in Steven and Zonzi as Lazio are potentially going to sign him on a pre-contract as well. We've got some tournament prize money for FA Cup progression and a bid for Alessandro Schupp as Spurs want to take him 24.1 mil. As Mauricio Pochettino says, I know you're not a selling club, but come on, are you tempted by this bid? Well, yeah, sort of. That's over his market valuation right now. But at 25, years old he could still get a little bit better 82 rated back-to-back -back player of the month lest we get shook in really great form this year and i'll say it once again not a selling club our star players stay here moving on to our second of the three games today as we return to the premier league but travel away from home take on eddie house bournemouth away at the vitality stadium uh, right now we are top of the table by four points and bournemouth not having a great season just four wins all season long sitting in 19th place so definitely fancy our chances heading into this game uh, the team is good though it's a 4-4 one one. I always talk about Bournemouth's team really positively in career because there's so many good, fun players in their lineup. Uh, but for our team, back to our normal league lineup, playing the free fire tour, of course, with a strike duo of Christian and Ben. So second game, first Premier League game. It's Bournemouth away. We are favourites, so let's get the job done. Mario Gray with a nice little free ball to Mark Stendera. And the German back to Gray, finds Janssen, oh, off the post from Janssen and Bustos will prevent the corner. Well, Bournemouth may be the underdogs heading into the game, but a great start for them there. And Vincent Janssen, formerly a Spurs, almost gave them the early leave instead. We've got a quick counter, Benteke, oh, oh. That's a golden chance and a stupid mistake for me. I tried to do a quick little circle and X to stop and turn so easy to use and so OP in this year's FIFA. But I didn't press the X button on time and I put it straight into Begovic's gloves. That was stupid. I, I should have just controlled it normally and then tried to dribble around him or just controlled it and ran and smashed it. Not just try to an instant stop and turn. It's Josh King on the ball, turns Socrates and finds some space to shoot and that's a big block by John Stones turning it behind for a corner. The Cherries have started off brighter and are looking a better team right now. 22 minutes in, Eddie Howe's side notices a big game for them to try and claw away from the drop zone and they've started off really well as Brereton finds Grealish. And our two young English talents link up down the right-hand side. And away goes Ben. Ruben Duarte playing catch-up. Ben, there's with the stop and turn. Crosses. Arriving is Ben Teke. Straight down the throat of Asmir Begovic. Definitely goals in this game. No way it finishes 0-0. Stat it then, guys. 0-0 the final score. As, uh, as Greenish finds Ben Brereton. And Brereton shoots. And Begovic saves and turns behind for a corner. 29 minutes in. What a start. Barkley through to Jack and now Jack finds Ben, he's got Benteke the with him, the these two such a great little duo for pace and strength, it'll drop to no Benteke, we'll flicks it through to Brereton, out wide is Jack Grealish, can he finish? Oh, just wide the post, how is this still 0-0? Even Duarte for Bournemouth through to Mark Stendera. And Barkley charged it down well and found Brereton. And Ben's got Christian with him. Slides him through. Christian Benteke. There's the goal. There's the goal. And we take the lead just past the 55-minute mark. Christian Benteke with four in two. Says to the camera lens, this is the club I want to stay at until I retire. That girl's not very impressed, but she should be. Because that was brilliant. Nice little ball to uh, set him through there by Brereton. And a brilliant finish across the body of Asmi Begovic, who's been in Fine form this afternoon, but can do nothing about that. It's 11 goals in all competitions for Christian Benteke as he gets another and makes it 1 0 to the visitors. And that will do it. Final score at the Vitality Stadium Bournemouth 0, Aston Villa 1. It was a really good start to the game. Then it sort of died down a little bit in the second half. But Benteke's goal in the second, 4 in 2, does confirm it. Another big victory for Aston Villa. It's now three clean sheets in a row as well. And we have responded big time after our defeat to Everton. Bournemouth actually started this game off really well, but they seemed to run out of gas really quickly. And after Benteke's early goal in the second half, it just knocked the stuffing out of them and they had nothing left in the tank. So 1-0 to final score, we get the job done. We probably did deserve to edge the game as well. For man of the match, I'll share it between the guy who got the assist, Ben Brereton, and the goal, Christian Benteke. These two this season have combined for 18 goals in all competitions. And whilst they've not quite been as lethal as they were in the second half of last season, they are starting to pick it up now. As we're now into the second half of the season this year, I'm expecting more goals from the pair of them as we're going to stay top of the table. And there's yet more interest in one of the players on our shortlist right now. Might want to take Chanson and Bemba from Newcastle on a free transfer. Now, obviously, we still have a lot of money left in our budget because the money when you sign players on free transfers doesn't come out until the start of the new season. Of course, you have a reduced budget for the new year based on how many players you sign on freeze. But... 
I don't know. Oh, where's Lucas Hernandez going? I was thinking about him. Liverpool, interesting. A good sign there from Klopp. I don't know whether we'll make any more signings or not. Hernandez, if I was going to make one, probably would have been the only one we'd sign. But to be honest, I like the team we've got right now. We've played the pre-contract game the last two seasons and done really well with it. And with Mirinchuk and Gnabry already agreeing for uh, free transfers with us for next season... I think I'm fine with the team as it is. I was possibly thinking about making one more signing in today's episode to make it free for the window so far. But you know what? We're in good form right now. We're playing very well indeed. Top of the table by four points as well. Forget it. The team's fine as it is. We don't need new signings. We just need to keep the boys here. But there is an interesting bid here from Everton as they want to take Andre Green for 13.2 mil. Now, obviously, we have a long-term target for that left midfield role in Ezekiel Barco. But of course, as we know at the moment, we can't agree a deal with Independiente because he's too valuable for the club and they've got not, uh, not got enough depth in that position. So what I was thinking about doing was possibly negotiating with Sam Allardyce and saying, you've given us 13.2 mil up front, but instead we'll ask for around 20 to 21 million pounds and maybe we could possibly squeeze enough pennies together to sign Barco but considering the fact that Barco is unavailable to, yeah, to be signed this season I'm going to say no forget it Green's a really good young talent anyway comes off the bench quite a lot and plays well as an impact sub Green staying here a again not a selling club keeping our players together now we also got yet another bid here as well as some prize money for our progress in the FA Cup uh, for Fabian Delft Stoke going to take him 6.7 mil we're going to say to Paul Lambert hands off Fabian is staying here get the memo Aston Villa don't sell our players anymore Delft stays at Villa Park this time and is going nowhere but I want to find out our opponents in the next round of the FA Cups. So let's find out together who will be taking on in the fourth round. Oh, ho, ho, ho. tough test that one. Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge on the 1st of February. That Oh, and there's a Manchester derby in the FA Cup fourth round as well. Oh, what a game that is going to be. Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. Would that be in the next episode? I think it will be. Uh, yes, it will be indeed. That's going to come in the very next episode, the very next game. Oh man, what a tough FA Cup fourth round it's going to be. Look at our month of February, some really key fixtures, and also in March as well. Oh, that's going to be a tough test, but bring on Conte's boys, we can take them. And we would love to head into that game full of confidence, continuing our mini win streak and our mini clean sheet streak as well, as we take on Watford for the third and final game of today's episode. Back at Villa Park, staying in the Premier League, and keeping our same line of information for this game, as we look to make it four wins from four. Yes? In all competitions, four clean sheets in four as well, and get another big three points here. So come on, Aston Villa, tough, tough, tough test against Chelsea in the FA Cup fourth round. But hey, get the win here. We'll be on a high going into the game at Stamford Bridge. I'm normally quite fortunate well avoiding the big the names in the early rounds of the FA Cup, but not yeah, this time. Chelsea, Chelsea away, this what a tough pitch. test that's going to be. But either way, I'm, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. And uh, I believe we can get through that too. If we keep this good streak up. Grealish finds Bustos. Oh, lovely first touch. Can now he finish for a tight angle? No. Because Danny Hernandez turns behind for a corner as Fabricio is denied. Still 0-0 with a fast start from this game. Well, another win, another clean sheet here. Let's get it done and get the early goal. As Dale Fry finds Shook, who will cross to the middle. And Stones can't control it. Barkley can shoot. Just over the bar. Still goal. But let's keep this intensity up and find that first goal. Javier Manquillo through to Ducore. And now Wilfred Zahar down the right-hand side turns. Alessandro Shook, not once, but twice. And Ducore gives it to Manquillo, storming forward here. Their Spanish fullbacks get forward a lot. Javier Manquillo and Alberto Moreno. So got to watch that in this game as Dale Fry heads it away. And look at how far Moreno and Manquillo are on the pitch right now. They're basically operating as secondary wingers as Richard Eason's pass is deflected. The good thing about that is that since we've got pace on the break, when we get the ball, we push the pace, they're going to be exposed and lacking numbers. Benteke to Brereton. Brereton to Bustos. Down the right. Christian, get in the box because you know I'm going to be aiming for you. In it goes. Bustos. Benteke. Oh, yes. They linked up in the first game today. They link up again. Fabricio's cross is always on point. Christian Benteke. Teke, one of the best target forwards I've ever used in career mode. And we've only had him for one and a half years. Aston Villa won Watford nil, and there's our breakthrough. And it's the same combination you saw in the first game today. Bustos storming down the right. Lovely cross in the middle. There's Ben Teke flicking it on, and what a perfect header. Spins into the top corner. Leaves Danny Hernandez rooted to the floor as Christian continues his brilliant form. Five goals in his last three games. This is why I kept him here. Corner for Aston Villa right before the break. Can we double our lead as Shook delivers towards Christian? Of course! And Prudel heads it behind for a corner. There's very few defenders that can cope with Christian Benteke's height and strength in the air. In it goes to him again. And again he flicks on and again he scores. 
I mean, we just can't sell the guy. We just can't sell him. He's too good at what he does. He's such a great target forward. Two goals today, both with his head, six in three. Oh, Christian Benteke staying at Aston Villa. What a big decision to keep him here. There's three minutes to go in the game, and bar an almighty collapse, we are going to get now, our fourth straight win and our fourth straight clean sheet. And after our loss to Everton, this is the yeah, way to respond. With Chelsea to come in the FA Cup fourth round, what a tough test we that's going to be. But this has been think, a very uh, nice mini run, a great response. And for Christian Benteke, five goals in his last three games. I mean, if you're looking for a target man in Karimo, you can't really go wrong with the big Belgian. He's so good at what he does. He, he links the play up so nicely, brings teammates into play, obviously scores a load of goals as well. Well, he wins every single header. There's there's so little negatives to Christian Benteke. Other than the fact he might cost you a bit of money in terms of the transfer fee and the wages, he's such a great striker, and that's why we were so desperate to keep him here. So final score, Aston Villa 2, Watford 0. We got the job done in the first half, courtesy of our big beastie Belgian, as we continue our really decent run. Four wins in a row, four clean sheets in a row as well, and another really decent, impressive display at home to the Hornets. So definitely deserved to win it out about it. Watford didn't really threatened in the entire match and for man the match no surprises for I think the third straight game what did he share it with Bros in the last one Benteke anyway gets the champagne with the two goals as he now takes his goal tally in the Premier League to is it nine for the season he's in really good form anyway and playing so well right now but that went in today's episode of Korea Window guys so a big thank you for watching and hope you have enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed today's episode then please do drop a like as likes are of course very much appreciated and it really helps channel that as well much love to you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you for a massive episode of Karimo coming out tomorrow afternoon where we'll take on Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge in the FA Cup fourth round and have transfer deadline day as well. Oh, Christian Benteke. And hopefully more goals for him too. Benteke's just on fire.